what I'll do is just take my pruners, turn them this way, and give me a nice sharp pointy end there. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Sunday, October 1st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna do a little figging around. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to propagate your own fig trees. Gonna share some of the things we've learned over the last couple years and kind of tell you how your way of doing it may differ from how we do it on a little bit larger scale. But before we talk about fig propagation, I want to revisit the pruning discussion that we talked about on our last fig video and show you a little experiment that I tried with some of our fig trees and pots. So on that last fig video, we were talking about how pruning promotes more new growth on the trees and that new growth is where the figs form. So if you cut the tip of a branch, what happens is you get all this new growth coming out the top there and hopefully more figs. So several weeks ago, I had a lady email me after receiving her Mary Lane fig tree in the mail, and she said the tip of it was broken off. And so what happened was we had some of these trees that were getting close to being too tall for the tallest box we use, which is a 36 inch tall box. And my mistake, I kind of tucked it in the top of the box like that, and it somehow broke during transit. So she was asking, will the tree still make it? Is it still gonna be okay? I told her, I think it would be just fine. And I told her what I think would happen to the tree, but I went ahead and sent her a new one anyways. So what I told her I thought would happen with that tree that had the tip broken off of it was that she would just get more lateral buds forming here and more lateral branches on the tree. But just to be sure, I took a couple trees I had that were too tall to ship and I cut the top side of them. Let me show you what they look like. So imagine taking this Mary Lane tree right here and just snipping it about right there with the pruners. That's what I did with this tree right here. And it looked just like a stick for a week or two. Now you can see we're getting all these little lateral buds forming here. Now I'd heard of this being done before. I'd seen it done on a couple other channels and supposedly this is a great thing to do if you're just growing figs in pots and you don't want your tree to necessarily get really tall but you want it to get kind of bushy. So instead of having a really tall Mary Lane tree here and the ones in our orchard do get pretty dang tall, we're going to have a more bushy fig tree with a lot of lateral limbs on it. Now you could do this with a fig tree in a pot. You could also do it with a fig tree in the ground. I probably wouldn't cut the tip out of it if I was getting close to the time when it was gonna get cold and the trees were gonna go dormant anyways. But maybe you're growing it indoors and you just wanna stimulate more lateral growth. Just cut the tip out of it and that's indeed what you'll do. So I had about six Mary Lane trees like this that had gotten too tall to ship. I cut the tips out of them. Now they're putting on all these side buds. I've got plenty of Mary Lane trees in my orchard. So if you missed out on the original clearance sale, I will put these six Mary Lane trees on the website just for this video here. They're probably gonna go fast. But if you missed out on that first sale, these are some nice trees here that are already producing some side branches. So now let's talk fig propagation. As you can see, we've already started some propagation. We got four trays of brown turkey here and a lot more to come. And so I wanted to walk you through the basics of fig propagation via cuttings. We don't do air layering around here. We don't do tissue culture around here. The only thing I really know is cutting propagation. So I'm gonna share some tips and tricks for that because maybe you have a tree on your homestead that you wanna multiply and plant some more of. So let's start off by talking about how to take a nice cutting. We'll use this big brown turkey tree. That's where all those cuttings in the greenhouse I showed you earlier came from. Now, when we did that pruning video last week, we had a lot of people say, I've got an old fig tree and it's just not producing anymore. So I thought I'd mention this real quick. You can see here all this old growth on this tree. 
what happens if you just let a tree grow and grow and don't prune it this old growth eventually stops making any more new growth and we didn't get a ton of figs off this tree this year it needs some serious pruning to promote a lot more new growth so if you've got an old tree kind of looks like this slowing down a lot do some aggressive pruning and that should help if we get a little closer to the base of the tree where we see these green leaves we can see a lot of new growth forming here that's where we want to take our cutting we don't want to take our cutting from this old growth right here you can and you might get a tree from it but you're going to have a lot better shot taking it from some of this new growth now i don't know if the light's going to allow you to see the real difference in limb color here but i've got my eye on this piece of new growth right here if we look down there we can see that limb's kind of gray that's old growth here nice and brown that's new growth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this one right there and that'll give us a nice long piece to work with all right so we got our piece of new fig tree wood here now the way i do this propagating a greenhouse full of trees every year is going to be a little bit different than the way you're going to want to do it if you're just wanting to propagate say one two three maybe four trees so i start all my cuttings in these two and a half inch pots and once they get a nice root ball in here i step them up to these tree pots we use for shipping the reason i do that is so i don't waste a bunch of soil there's always going to be about 10 percent of the cuttings we start that don't make it don't ever form leaves don't ever form roots i don't want to waste this much soil for each of those cuttings that don't do anything i'd rather only waste this much soil now starting them in a little pot like this does take more finesse than starting them in a pot like this so if you're doing this at home i would recommend using something like these tree pots here kind of a long tall pot now another big difference in what we do versus what you're going to want to do has to do with the size of the cutting i could take this stick right here and probably make three or four fig trees out of it but to keep things simple to keep your success rate higher i would recommend if you're doing this at home go with a larger cutting and go with a taller pot like i showed you earlier now let's talk about how to prep this cutting before you stick it in some soil one of the experiments I did last year was comparing cutting the tip off these cuttings versus leaving the tip there. Now this one obviously has some leaves on it, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's just assume it looks like that one right there with no leaves on top. So what I found last year is I have a much higher success rate when I cut the tips off these cuttings, just like we're going to do right here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit off the top there. When we leave that tip, even if we wrap it to keep the top moist, it just takes a long time for the growth to get going out of that top end there. If we cut that off, we get a lot faster lateral growth forming, almost just like we saw with those Mary Lane trees that we cut the tips out of. So we took off the tip of the cutting. Now for the bottom here, what I like to do is make a diagonal cut close to one of these bottom nodes so there's a bottom node right there what i'll do is just take my pruners turn them this way and give me a nice sharp pointy end there now does that diagonal cut make this thing root any faster than if we just did a straight cut maybe it does maybe it does it but it helps my system especially when abram is out here helping me so what i'll do is i'll go to a particular tree and i may take 30 to 100 cuttings at a time I'll take my cuttings, I'll cut the tips out of them, I'll make that diagonal cut, and I'll put them in a bucket of water until we get over here to the greenhouse ready to put them in soil. And so when he's helping me, he's not quite old enough to be able to look at a fig limb and know which end is up and which end is down. But if I cut this end pointy, he always knows that the pointy end goes down in the soil. So that's just kind of my system for keeping things straight so we're not growing upside down fig trees. Does it matter that much? I can't really say it does either way, but it certainly helps him know what he's doing. And then as far as other prep work for the bottom goes, you'll see a lot of different stuff out there. And we've tried a lot of different stuff over the years. We've tried kind of scoring down the sides here, making two or three little scoring lines. I tested that a little bit last year. Not sure it makes that big of a difference. So I don't do the little scoring lines anymore. I do take my little knife here and cut me just a little piece, just shave a little bit of that bark 
off the bottom there just like that so the bottom of the cutting is prepped back to the top here something i always recommend doing whether you're doing a greenhouse full of fig trees or just a few is wrapping the top you want to keep this from drying out so we use this stuff right here some places call it buddy tape paraffin wax tape we like the tape i've seen some growers have a little vat of wax they dip theirs down into but we just take this little stretchy tape here and we just want to wrap this tip here and there's really no such thing as wrapping it too much because that growth will always grow through it so we just wrap it so it looks like that and that top where we cut it won't dry out so our cutting is pretty much prepped here now to talk about rooting hormone do you need this stuff is it necessary or can you root a fig tree without it so this is the stuff we use called Hormodin 2. Back when I was starting to propagate fig trees, this was recommended to me by several commercial growers. It's the only rooting hormone I've ever used, but it works really, really well. It's a powder. And so we have these cuttings sitting in a bucket of water, and then we dip the wet cutting into the powder, and it coats the bottom of our cutting before we put it in the soil. There's also gel rooting hormones out there. There's a lot of different ones. You just want to do a few fig trees at your house. You probably don't want to spend 50 bucks for a jar of this stuff. This stuff can do thousands of cuttings, but if you're just going to do a few, no need to get a big jug like this. And I haven't seen it sold in smaller quantities. So if you're wanting to use a rooting hormone, maybe just get you a little bottle of that dip and grow gel or something like that off Amazon and use that or just start more cuttings. If you only need three trees, four trees, start 10 cuttings as opposed to six or eight and the percentages should work your way. I think you can still root a fig tree without rooting hormone. This right here just seems to get our percentages up a little bit. So you've decided whether or not you're going to use rooting hormone for your fig cuttings now what kind of soil do you put in your pots so we use pro mix exclusively when we're putting them in these little two and a half inch pots then we use just a standard potting mix so we get in bulk when we're stepping them up to the taller pots you could use a variety of things pro mix works really well for us you don't want to use anything that has a high nutrient content these little bitty fig cuttings are just starting to form leaves and roots are really easy to kill if you fertilize them. Ask me how I know. So you don't want to have anything with a high nutrient load in it. That's why the sterile pro mix works so well. Once they get up and going and get an established root system in the pot, you can start fertilizing them. But you can kill them really, really fast with too much nutrients when they're just developing. So the last two things we need to talk about are heat and water. The reason we start cuttings this time of year is because it's still relatively warm outside, still relatively warm in the greenhouse, and we can get these cuttings to take off pretty fast. If we wait until December, it takes a lot longer to get these things going. Now, if you have a cooler area you're trying to do these cuttings in you might benefit from putting them on a heat mat we don't use a heat mat for cuttings in our greenhouse here i have in the past but i found i can do without it if i start them early enough and so abram and i started all these brown turkey cuttings just a week ago today i believe and if we look close here we can see some of them are already budding not all of them are but we're starting to see some action here that tells me my timing is just right and then as far as water goes you want to keep that soil moist but you definitely don't want to overwater them because those cuttings can rot now if you've got some humidity domes for the trays or pots you're using that will work really really well but what we do instead every day when we come out here and water the greenhouse we just give these a tiny little splash so as opposed to these onion transplants that we water until we see it coming out the bottom there with these we're just giving them a little splash just to keep that pro mix moist we don't ever want to water them so much that we see water dripping out the bottom now once we get a nice root ball established in this pot we can start watering some more then because at that point we're not worried about this little stick rotting on us 
So if you follow those tips and tricks, I think you could at least get a 50% take rate on your cuttings. It's one of those things you just get better at the more you do it. Our percentages tend to go up a little bit every year. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, if you want to get one of those few remaining Mary Lane trees we have left. And if you missed the last video where we talked about three reasons to prune fig trees, you can see that right here. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.